in case you don't know who I am, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Trudy Cotton and I've been the Tradecraft representative at St Mary's for about the last four years. And I've got two aims today. First of all, I'd like to explain to you the difference between fair trade, tradecraft and tradecraft exchange because I found that really hard to get my head around at first and I'm sure not everybody will know what I'm talking about. Secondly, I'd like someone to take over from me. We're moving to Devon, um, probably in the autumn sometime. It would have been my last stall at the beginning of September at St Mary's. It's probably not going to happen now, um, but I would love someone to be able to take over in September if they could. And as I'll try to explain to you, it's actually a very nice job. So to start with, the difference between fair trade, tradecraft and tradecraft exchange. Well, Tradecraft was set up in 1979 and it was set up as a trading company to buy from local growers and producers in the, in the poorer parts of the world and to sell goods in the UK. The key point is that Tradecraft guarantees a price to all their growers, so the growers know exactly what is going to come in um, and also the craft producers do as well. Tradecraft also set up the idea of a social premium. Now this was to help build up communities. So some of the profits, if you can call them profits, that Tradecraft makes are ploughed back into local communities so that the poorer growers can have um, schools, um, water supplies, hospitals, all the kind of things that you need. Now the second um, arm of Tradecraft is Tradecraft Exchange. And Tradecraft Exchange is a charity designed to help people in poorer countries who want to set up their own businesses. So it'll provide raw materials, it'll provide loans, it'll provide expertise, people who can help them. And this could be craft producers, growers again. And a lot of the recent emphasis has been on helping women um, set up their own little businesses. Now they will then be able to sell to Tradecraft so they've got a guaranteed market providing they can get it going. Now, Tradecraft, so that's Tradecraft and Tradecraft Exchange, all part of Tradecraft. Now, it's like any other charity. You can leave money in your will, you can donate, you can uh, we fundraise. Um, but they're also something slightly different, which you might be interested in if you want to take over. They do something called Meet the People Tours. Um, so you can go to South America, Southeast Asia and Africa. Next year it's Malawi. Um, and if you really, really want to get involved, you can perhaps get involved in one of those tours. So what's the difference between Tradecraft and the Fair Trade Foundation? Well, the Fair Trade Foundation started in 1992 and Tradecraft, as you can probably imagine, was a major player in setting this up. If you buy with the Fair Trade logo, which is the familiar green and blue yin and yang sign, which you'll see in a minute, you know that the standards that were first established by Tradecraft are applying in that particular transaction so that the growers or the producer is getting a fair price and the money is going to the local community. The fair price is particularly important because a lot of super supermarkets have sort of jumped on the wagon and are offering um, fair trade goods with their own logo. And they don't necessarily guarantee the fair price. They may be helping the environment, but obviously supermarkets have to make a profit. And that conflicts really with the help of helping these, these producers. Um, so, um, so as a, as a result, Tradecraft is, is very, very good because it does guarantee the price and this means that the producer doesn't have to worry about price fluctuations and the world market. Now, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to move my head to one side, so I hope I go the right side, no, this way. This is the Tradecraft logo and you do know the blue um, and green Fair Trade logo, certainly. But I'm going to show you a little bit of a video about the Fair Trade Foundation. And this video was shot in 2016. Um, and it just gives you a little bit more about that. So I'm going to show you that now. Who would have thought 20 years ago, when we started with just three Fairtrade certified products, that we'd have been able to reach over one and a half million farmers and workers, involving more than 500 companies in the UK. It's an incredible journey. 
Just last year, we changed our global constitution so that the farmers and workers of Africa, Asia and Latin America are now half owners of fair trade globally, making us the only ethical mark half owned by the producers, something we're all incredibly proud of. So actually just seeing the fair trade mark, knowing that if I buy something with that mark on, I'm guaranteed that the farmer gets a fair price and that the communities that they're part of can have a social premium to build schools and to improve healthcare and roads and all the basic things that we take for granted. Pero mamá tente yo ya no. Añe na era. Aquela só bia ka je ni baula kisi. For me fair trade's a it's a simple concept. You can do something every day when you shop. And that simplicity of concept is something which people have really taken to heart. And for me that's the big inspiration. The uh, warmth and enthusiasm that people in, across the country feel for fair trade. Because that is the strength of fair trade, is that it is about local people getting involved, wanting to buy fair trade and wanting to make a difference. Never let anybody say this can't be done. It can. Fair trade is proof that individuals working together can achieve amazing things. That's the power of it in all of us. That's the power of you. I hope that's helped a bit to explain the Fair Trade Foundation. So why should you bother to support fair trade and trade craft? Now Sue Sykes, whom I took over from, um, always said if you buy fairly traded goods you're spending your money maybe a fiver on some coffee and some chocolate and you're actually supporting a charity but you're getting something back in exchange. So it's a good sort of bargain really and by giving some and by buying anything some of the money will definitely go to trade craft exchange. Um, because we operate a system where you get 10% off if you order in bulk um, and we send that back to the charity. But I wanted to try something slightly different um, and particularly about the Christian side of um, buying, fair buying fair trade goods as it's thought for the day. And I've got a bit of a gift really because in August um, Gary introduced the five marks of mission. So I'm going to try and show how the five marks of mission can be fulfilled by supporting fair trade and trade craft. Now I'm going to stretch a point or two, I'm a teacher, we're good at doing this, but um, Gary's on holiday so I don't suppose he'll mind. Now, the first two marks of mission, proclaim the good news and nurture new believers. Now, obviously proclaiming the good news suggests spreading Christianity. And, if it, and Tradecraft is a Christian organisation. If you can see a Christian organisation doing good things in your local community, you're going to feel well disposed towards the Christian church. Uh, and of course, this is exactly what Christians see, uh, what, what new what people see in poorer communities. So I think it actually does help proclaim the good news. Now nurturing new believers is a little bit trickier, but I think uh, a new believer perhaps who's started to embrace Christianity and sees tradecraft doing good things will think, yes, this is, this is, this is actually giving me clout. This is, this is a very good sort of um, religion and belief system to get involved with. Uh, and of course there's education, because, because the, the social premium provides for schools, people can learn to read and write and learn more about the Christian religion. So I think the first two marks sort of come into it. The third one, respond in living, lo loving service, is actually very crucial to tradecraft. Obviously you're serving the people who supply the goods, um, who produce the, who produce the um, produce, and um, you're also, I think, supplying our local community. During lockdown, um, we were actually privileged to be able to go to, to people and deliver goods. And it was really nice because you got to see some of the houses where people lived. You got to see them in a different context from church. And it was, it was very nice to be able to serve the community as well as knowing that you're serving people whom you're never going to meet or probably not going to meet um, abroad. 
Um, and then, of course, you come to fighting injustice. Well, Tradecraft and Fair Trade are absolutely um, there with fighting injustice. We all know what's happened. Um, the rich countries of the world have screwed down poorer countries to get their goods very cheaply. It's a very unjust situation. Now, Fair Trade proves it doesn't have to be like that. It's a kind form of capitalism. And we all know that be kind is something that we've heard a lot about recently. And I think that's, that's something worth bearing in in mind um, and it's a very it's a very powerful way of fighting fighting justice but also being being kind to people and then finally safeguard creation well like any good Christian organization tradecraft is moving towards a more sustainable way of getting its goods and it's been trying very very hard to, to source key ingredients sustainably in recent years um, for example, palm oil, it tries very, very hard to find s sustainable palm oil um, plantations in order to provide its biscuits um, and some of the many things that include palm oil. So it's a work in progress, but it's very much part of Tradecraft's objectives. But if that doesn't convince you, you can read my article in the Parish Magazine if you like. I feel quite strongly that it's very, very important that we fight injustice in the world from, from the point of view of our descendants, from our children and our grandchildren. Just to give one figure from that very capital or capitalist organisation, Credit Suisse, the world's richest 1% own more than half the world's household wealth. Now, in the world of the internet, this can't be hidden. Um, poorer countries, um, people can see what the West, what um, richer countries have, and they want some of it. And you can't really blame them. Everybody says, oh dear, my economic migrants. But if we were in that situation, I think we might want to become economic migrants too. Um, as a result, of course, um, they're risking their lives in huge quantities to try and come to the West. They're making very corrupt people very rich. Um, and um, of course, it's also leading to a lot of resentment, which is kind of understandable um, in the richer countries that all these people are trying to come to them. Now, um, this actually has led to a really unpleasant form of far-right nationalism, which is growing in Europe. And we all know where that can lead, if we can think back to the Second World War. We've also got a very ugly form of racism rearing its head again. Um, I thought these two things were sort of dying out and we'd pretty well uh, finished, got put beyond this, but it's clearly not the case and it's something we've got to watch. Now if you want to leave a fairer and safer world for our grandchildren and um, for our children, then this is one way in which we can contribute towards that. Just by supporting fair trade, you're doing a very small thing, but it's a very, but if, if all those small things add up, then we are fighting injustice together in the world and we're, we're, we're benefiting the world in, in doing so. But of course you can go further than just buy trade craft goods, you can join the local team, you can take over from me in fact. Now it's much easier running a fair trade, a trade craft stall at St Mary's now. We have a lovely cupboard in the church, so you, all you have to do is open the cupboard and get out your regular items on a stall. Um, Ros used to have this huge kerfuffle of moving everything over to the church hall. Sue used to keep her stuff at home, but we've got that lovely cupboard now. Um, secondly, we've got someone to help with the, with the financial side because Gwenda from God's Hill will do the ordering, she'll send you an invoice um, so you can pay for the goods with your content, with what you've made in the store and she'll help you with stock taking um, about twice a year. And the other thing is it's a social thing because you meet up with representatives from other churches, from Hyde, from Wood Green, from God's Hill um, and of course even from, um, even from, from um, churches that aren't in the Avon Valley Park so Joy from Downton and Isabel from the Methodist Church, they're all part of our team and we all work together and we put on fundraising events like that wonderful banana event at the end of February, uh, um, which we, I think probably many of us will remember. Um, so it's all, it's all, um, it's all, it's a, it's a nice thing to do, it's a fun thing to do, we only meet every six weeks or so, it doesn't take up masses of time. And above all, of course, you get to know our super regular customers uh, and they make running a store a pleasure. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody who supported me, all my customers, all the people who helped set the stall up, um, cope with the fact that I can't put the table down, have to do it later, um, and all the, helpful, uh, the help I have, for example, from the Parish Council in setting up Tradecraft over the years. And I'd like to say um, goodbye to anybody I don't see again before we go. Um, you've been such wonderful people and um, I will miss you. 
Um, and but just to end on a, another note, I'd like to play you um, one, one of my favourite hymns is "Make Me Chant for Your Peace," but I didn't quite like the versions I found online. So I found a prayer of Saint Francis, which kind of sums up what I think tradecraft is all about, which is being kind and giving um, rather than receiving. So I hope you enjoy it, and thank you very much indeed for listening. All the very very best. Bye. May I be along my way An instrument of peace this day Where there is hatred Let me sow love and kindness as I go Lend my hand if someone falls Forgiving and receiving all Offer hope to ease despair Where there is doubt, I'll take faith there Where there is dark, I'll shine the light Where they are sad, I'll bring delight Help me comfort them instead of seeking to be comforted. Understanding for their good, not needing to be understood. Help me love unceasingly without regard. For who loves me? Because in giving we receive, and by forgiving gain reprieve.